the, the things that we debated at some length are not in our report because uh, we thought that some of these issues uh, needed to be addressed by a third committee, um, specifically things relating to the naming of an award or what an award would look like. Um, and so um, we, we are asking that the committee um, or that the business meeting extend to the committee to address those sorts of issues. Uh, but I do want to make a few points about, um, hold on, I'm trying to get to the right page again. Essentially, the, um, some of the issues that have come up in the past relating to a YA award. And um, I think that a Campbell-like award really does solve some of the problems that have come up repeatedly in the business meeting. Um, for example, uh, this issue of, of defining what YA is and whether, um, uh, you know, how we would categorize the award if it were a Hugo. Um, that uh, a Campbell-like award based on age group does sort of solve that problem. We also presented last year um, an extensive report about how other YA awards actually define YA. And so there's a, a wide variety in definitions, um, either issues internal to the narrative, the marketing category, or the uh, merchandising of an award. All of these things sort of change over the years, and so that's why uh, we thought as a committee that actually a, a definition, a very strong definition of YA is probably not a good idea because trends change, time passes, and each year's Worldcon uh, voters should be allowed to sort of decide what they think is YA. And again, if it is a Campbell-like award, not a Hugo, then we wouldn't have that issue of uh, definition that has been such a, a problem in the past. Additionally, the issue of word count, which is uh, associated with the Hugo literature categories, would not need to be an issue for YA categories. We did some uh, basic research on typical word counts for young adult novels, and we found that there was a huge variety in those word counts. So for example, if you look on page 41, 41. thank you. Third paragraph down, we've given you just a few samples of the word counts um, that you might find in a young adult novel. But I'd like to give you um, just a few more so for example, you see that the giver is an example of a very low um, number, a, a low word count for young adult. But of course, Deathly Hollows is a prime example of a gigantic book um, with a word count of almost 200,000. But a few other ones include Aragon, uh, which has a word count of 157,000. Inkheart has a word count of 146,000. Twilight. 118,000. Shiver by Maggie Stiefvater, 95,000. Libba Bray's books tend to be almost 100,000. So we really do have a, a, a large variety. City of Bones was 130,000 words. So uh, we really do have an extension of, you know, we have very large books and very small books written in young adults. So that word count category for that we see in the Hugos is really just not appropriate or feasible for a young adult uh, book either. Could I get that paper from you with the word counts? I'm sorry? Could I get the paper with the word sure. counts? Sure. And I don't have to worry about getting this off the tape. Thank you. We also spoke with a few YA authors um, to sort of get sort of the feel of whether a Campbell uh, would be um, an appropriate award versus a Hugo, and um, we found um, uh, positive feedback in general. And of course, last year, again, we gave you a big long list of the number of um, books that hadn't been uh, nominated for Hugos in the past, but that are actually award-winning young adult novels and other categories. And so, um, you know, if a Campbell Award went through or a Campbell-like award went through, you would essentially have five books a year, um, depending on what the business meeting decides, um, that would be uh, named and honored. Any of those books would also be, um, you know, you could nominate those for a Hugo as well. Uh, we spoke to Lee Bardugo, Veronica Roth, the author of the Divergent series, 
Margaret Stoll, um, she wrote Beautiful Creatures, and Mary Lou, who wrote the Legend series, and all four of those authors were, um, you know, uh, felt very positive about uh, this award. Um, and we could potentially get statements from them as well to show that. So there is, um, the, the Campbell-like award isn't necessarily something that we um, envisioned in the past 20 years of this uh, discourse, but it is something that does offer um, a lot of positives, we think. Questions? Mr. Blog. Yes. Please use the microphone. Gary Blog, um, I may have missed it, but did you send out any feelers as to uh, uh, for sponsorship, as to long-term sponsorships? And you don't have to give out names, but how much f how much feedback did you uh, seek out, and how many you can give you can give like you know not names, but how many said yeah we'll do it. We actually spoke with the um, the people on the Hugo Committee to determine whether a sponsor was even necessary. The reason there is a sponsor for the Campbell Award is because the Campbell is a very, it's a sort of unique uh, award that, you know, because of its history, it had a sponsor. Dell Magazines is currently the sponsor. Um, because originally it was not, a, you know, a, a World Science Fiction Society award. But it has been sort of grandfathered in into the Constitution um, here. Now, because this would be added, potentially would be added to the Constitution, um, it would not need to be sponsored. It would essentially be an award sponsored by our body. So, um, and this, I didn't include this in the report because this is something that we thought we would address more in a following year's committee. But th we looked at all the expenses that would be associated with an award of this, and including things like the presence of nominees at the, um, you know, the Hugo banquet or whatever. So those, all the expenses that would be associated with this award are essentially the same expenses that you get with um, a Hugo. And the uh, Worldcon, each year's Worldcon would be responsible for managing how the award is paid for, just as it is now. So it would not be financially any different. Are there any other, Mr. Yellow? I note that you indicated that you surveyed authors of YA works. Have you done any kind of surveying of the potential nominating pool to find out how many of the people who nominate regularly for Hugo's and the Campbell Award actually read YA, and to what extent are those people people who are likely to be able to make informed judgments about those works? I think that's a good question. Um, we haven't done an official survey, but I did report on that issue last year in our committee's report. Um, I gave numbers from past world cons um, and panels. Bye. Okay. See you later. All right. I guess he doesn't really want to know what I had to say. All right. Um, so if you look to our report from last year, which is still online, I believe, uh, we gave numbers from LUNCON, from the YA track that occurred there, uh, the number of panels, the numbers of authors that participated, the numbers of authors who actually said they were interested in being on a YA panel, even if they weren't um, assigned to one of those panels in the end. Um, the numbers were um, very large, in fact. Um, most of the YA panels were standing room only um, at LONCON. Um, many of the rooms had over 100 seats, and so they were already, and they were filled. Uh, so, unfortunately, I don't recall all of the numbers off of the top of my head, but they are in our report from last year. Uh, we also provided numbers for the, um, the percentage or the amount of votes that would need a YA Hugo for the, the number of nominees and voting um, submissions that would be required for it to be the least popular of all of the categories. And it is very feasible. So um, I think that given just the numbers of uh, attendees at one Worldcon's YA track, um, there would be enough voting members to easily uh, meet the lowest category requirements. But again, that's all in our report from last year. Any other questions for the committee?